Kia ora, year 12 and 13. This is a video about modelling with Trig, and it's a remake of one I did in 2016. Now, I've used a question out of New Lake directly, which is a little bit naughty, but I'm doing this because the New Lake workbook has some fantastic questions on that should help you with the assignment. Um, so I'm just going to follow this one exactly as it is, and hopefully they won't mind too much. Um, so we've got this situation, we're told that sales of air conditioning units follow a sine curve and we're given a maximum and a minimum value for the number of units sold in that um, time. Now I'm redoing this because last year I made a, a little mistake near the end of the video which involved whether I was working with 12 or 12,000. Okay, so we're just going to sort that out to start with and we're going to do it by saying let x be number of weeks since the start of the year and we're going to define y the number of units sold and I'm going to define that as in thousands Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to very, very slowly draw the graph and then we're going to look at how we can model it. Now in the question, you've been told to use a sine curve and if you've watched the first video, you'll know that there are four factors we've got to think about and this is what our curve is going to look like. So as we're drawing the curve, I want you to start thinking about which of these factors we can work out easily. We've been told to follow a sine curve here, so I'm going to do that first. Then I'm going to show you how you could very easily do this as a cosine curve as well. Remember that our basic sine curve looks like this. Okay, and it starts here at the origin. What we're going to do is we're going to shift our curve and, and stretch it out or squeeze it in. All right, so this is going to be my upwards shift. This is going to be my amplitude change. This B is going to relate to the period of the graph. And the C is going to relate to the horizontal shift. But we're going to do the graph slowly first, and then those things are just going to fall out. Okay, so let's see what we know. Well, we've got a graph. And we're going to start here at 0. And we need to go out to 52. So I'm just going to mark off blocks like this, roughly 10, 20, 30, 40, and that one there can be 50. So we'll just erase that. I'm not going to put numbers on for that because it's going to clutter things up too much. Up here, I've got Y. So I'm not drawing any negative part to that graph because I'm not going to have negative sales. So the first thing I'm going to look at is where did I have the max and the min? So I've got in week 9... In week 35, I've got the maximum number of sales at 12,000 units, or 12. So I can plot this point here at about 9, and this point here at about 35. The next thing I know is that I've got the minimum sales in week 22 and week 48. And in those weeks, sales are down at... 5,000. So we'll pop on 12 here and 5 down here. Now before I even plot those minimum points, the most important thing to work out is where's my midline going to be? Well it's going to be halfway between 12 and 5, so that's going to be at 8.5. So we'll draw that in. Now let's put on the minimum values. So in week 22, so about here, sales are down at 5,000. And then again, 10, 20, 30, 40, at about week, at week 48, here's my next minimum. Right, now I can draw my sine curve in from here, um, and we'll do that now. So here comes my sine curve. So some important things to work out. Well, this is at 9, so it's going to keep going like that. This point here, this minimum, is at 22. 
So one period is how many weeks? Well, it's from 35, week 35 to week 9, so it's 26 weeks. So we'll just park that for now. That's going to help us get one of those coefficients. The next thing to figure out is where is this point here, first of all? Well, it's halfway between 9 and 22. So that point's at um, 31 over 2, 15.5. So we'll mark that in. But the point we really want to find for our sine curve is what we can think of as the start of our sine curve. Now, there's not really any such thing as the start of a sine curve, but if we just quietly up here sketch our basic sine curve, we see that it starts at the origin. So what we're looking for is where is that origin in our transformed graph. So to figure out this point here, which is the origin, I'm going to use this distance here, Right, because I'm using the symmetry of the graph. So if this is 6.5, this point is back another 6.5. So it's going to be at 2.5. So why is that important? Well, that's going to be my horizontal shift factor. I've moved out 2.5 units. So we are now ready to write our equation, but I'm going to do that... Actually, I'm going to do it on this slide, and I'm just going to erase a few bits and pieces first. So let's just make some room here. While I'm doing that, you can start trying to write the equation. Now, we've been told to do a sine curve, so that's what we're going to do. Right, this is what we're looking for. A sine B, X plus C plus D. Okay, so four things to work out. We'll start with the easiest one. We've shifted our graph up. 8.5 units. So we're going to have plus 8.5 on the end. And instead of having an amplitude of 1, we go up 3.5 here and we go down 3.5 here. So my A, my amplitude change, is 3.5. Right? I've stretched my graph so that the ups and downs are no longer plus and minus 1. Okay, next I'm looking and I'm going to work out the horizontal shift. Now that bit is the hard bit to do if you don't do a graph. But once you've done the graph and you've found this origin point here, it's pretty easy. So we're going to have x minus 2.5. Right? Just remember, it's not any of these crossing points that we care about. It needs to be the one that matches up to our original sine curve here. So we're looking for the point here as the curve is going up, right? So, let's see. Right, there. That one there, because we're on the way up. Just as over here, we're on the way up here. So I hope you like the uh, Star Wars thing. It's quite fun. The one we don't want to use is this one, right? Because this is on the way down, and that matches up to that part of the curve there. So that's bad, right? So avoid that mistake. Uh, the last thing I've got to do is work out this thing in here, so B. Well, the normal sine period is 2 pi. We want to stretch our curve out. So what we're going to do is we take that normal period and we divide it by our one, okay? So this works for sine and cosine. If you're doing a tan graph with a transformation... You'd put pi up there, but we're not doing that. Normal over our 1. And we can simplify that nicely, and we get pi over 13. Okay, so our equation is going to be this. So there you go. That's the equation, right? And we've carefully defined y to be in thousands of units. Okay, so that should work. I'm going to do another video where I use that equation to solve a couple of problems because that's what most of you will really be caring about. Right? The first step is to write the equation, the next step is to start using it. Thanks for watching.